Well, I hope everybody's doing great. Today we're going to talk about the communication is essential part two. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, I'm always excited about this week. I've practiced this sermon about three, four times and just really believe that God wants to speak to each one of us uh, in a very unique and distinctive way to challenge us how to communicate. Um, this morning in Sunday school, we talked about affirmations and how we need to affirm and lift one another up. This morning, I want to talk to you about uh, a couple things and just really encourage us in that as well. So let's pray before we jump into this. Lord, I thank you so much that, Lord, that you fight our battles for us, that, Lord God, that you uh, give us the strength to continue on. And I, Lord, I pray that you speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that, Lord God, whether we're in this room or we're online, that, Lord God, that you challenge us, that, Lord, that you convict us, that, Lord, that you rearrange our thinking, that, Lord, is under your power, under the power of your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you literally speak to us, and that, Lord, that you literally guide us. And, Lord, we just thank you so much that you love us so much, even when we're not lovable, that, Lord, we thank you in your name. Amen. So Ephesians 4.29 is our jumping off verse that you'll hear this week and next week as well. It says this, it says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such is as good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. So uh, that is where my introduction comes from. Um, I love this very part that it says that... Let no, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good building one another up. We kind of jumped off that this morning in Sunday school about affirming one another, encourage one another. But it, it talks about this very fact of the first point. There's only two points in this ver- uh, sermon, so it's a short one. And I know what most people are thinking. Yes, that's not true because I never have short sermons, but it is really short today. When I practice at this this, this weekend, this, this week, to make the CD, it was only 15 minutes. So um, stay tight, probably going to be less than 15 minutes. So if you're taking a nap on bedside assembly, wake up, you'll make it through, drink some coffee, a monster Red Bull, just to get you through this, you'll be fine. Make some espresso, put some chocolate chips in it, and you'll be fine. So number one, be, with, be a good listener. Um, my mom used to say, clean your room and go one, in, one, one side of the ear and out the other because I wasn't a very good listener. I got in trouble in junior high for yawning too much in uh, Mr. Mitmo, Malone's classroom and was almost kicked out of class because I yawned too much. There was just so much boredom in my life that I was not a good listener. Um, and so the very fact we need to be good listeners to one another. So sub point A, of course, there might be two points, but there's multiple sub points. Um, the very first sub point is don't check your brains in at the door. Um, Josh McDowell wrote a book called Don't Check Your Brains in the Door, and it was about, about how to uh, fight or understand what you believe in, to, to be- know what you believe in. And that's not what we're talking about, is don't check your brains in the door. Too many times we t- speak before we actually think about what we're talking about. And so uh, the statement, open your mouth, insert foot, is an adage that we hear so many times. We, we open our mouth, insert our foot, because we say something stupid. Seems to be the lifestyle for many people in today's society. We often give an opinion before we actually know what we're talking about, or give it an input when no one really wants to hear it. That has happened to me so many times. The Bible says that this kind of behavior is shameful and foolish. In Proverbs 18, 13, it says this. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. I think that's very funny because in the Bible it says that you should call nobody a fool. But the very fact is the that it's shameful and full. The, the Bible actually talks about this. It says that the tongue is a difficult th- thing to tame. 
It also talks about that, that we should not have blessings and curses out of the same place. So I can't say to Randy, I hate you, and then in the same verse, I love you, because it doesn't work. It's, it, how can you say to somebody, I hate that, and I love that? So I can't say I hate broccoli, but I love broccoli and cheese. It doesn't work, because I literally hate broccoli, but if you put cheese on it, I love it. See, it doesn't work. It's either you love it or you hate it. It's a love-hate relationship. You ever hear that? It doesn't work. You either hate it or you like it. What do you really mean? So we need to listen carefully to others and hear what they mean instead of just the words they're speaking. And this is a priceless gift. If we can give each other, if we can literally listen to what they're saying, if we can give them the, the priceless gift of listening to them, um, to them strictly. I love going to counseling sessions because um, doing counseling is because I, I love giving eye contact. Family counseling is my favorite thing to do. Or marriage counseling is something I love to do because I stare at people. And, and they, they go, you are making me very uncomfortable because I'm staring at them. I'm listening intently to find out what they're saying. Plus, um, it's the body language. And so with this new thing of wearing masks, it's very difficult because all you see is their eyes because... My wife knows when I'm not telling the whole truth that I'm trying to keep a secret from her, whether it's a, a gift or something, because I have a twitch in my lip, like Elvis Presley, you know, you're nothing but a hound dog. And so she goes, oh, you're not really telling me honest about what's going on because you got a twitch. And that's, you know, that's not totally true. Anyways, so... I read people's eyes and body language. And so in a, in a marriage counseling or counseling session, I literally watch people and they always go, you're, you're making me feel uncomfortable. I'm sorry. And then I go to a mission strip to Mexico and they're literally going, um, there is something uh, going on. I'll be watching the kids and saying, hey, um, I've been watching you all week. And they go, that's kind of weird. You're an older guy watching people uh, say stuff. So we, if we listen to people and literally hear what they're saying, it is a rare gift. See, it is difficult to be a good listener. For many of us, listening is a skill that must be consciously developed. You're not automatically a good listener because we have more to say. I am what they would call a professional communicator. I communicate professionally. I talk to people all the time. I, I have spoken at different uh, conferences for young people when I was a youth pastor, but I communicate every Sunday. So they say that I'm a communicator. And so on the other side, for me to communicate all the time, I'm listening. I don't listen well. So I try to work on listening. Uh, I went to conferences, I've read books. Uh, so on the side of counseling, I try to listen, but it's not a gift. I had to really learn to listen. The other thing is to control your tongue. Growing up as a young person, my tongue got me in trouble a lot. Got me kicked out of class. In third grade, Miss Bostetter, I was... I had a can of secret, uh, secret can. Remember when the tins, it came in a metal tin? I had it filled with pennies. And I was throwing pennies at everybody in my class. And Miss Bostetter said, give me your pennies. You don't take pennies from a person in a third grade and says, give me your pennies. And so she took my pennies and put them in her desk and she told me I'd never get them back. I was mad. So my tongue got the best of me and I got kicked out of class. And as I was leaving the class, I threw desks and I wasn't a very good third grader. Miss Bostetter was six foot one. She was a tall third grader, third grade teacher. She took me to the office and sent me to the office with Mrs. Tacky, which was the principal. And she was an older lady. And I said, okay, I'm going to yell at the principal. 
So I walked in and I screamed at the principal, you don't understand me, she took my pennies. And Mrs. Tacky says, am I yelling at you? Don't you yell at me. She was calm and collective. At that moment, my tongue got the best of me. And remember, I shared that passage of scripture that your tongue is a difficult thing to tame. And growing up, I got in big trouble a lot of times my tongue got the best of me. James 1.19 says this, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everything should be, should, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So there's three components in this passage. And this is what they are. The three components is be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. These are very important things that we should make part of our lives. But let's change that quick to listen to be swift to hear. Swift to hear is listening will be genuine interest to, to really be interested in what that person is saying, to be interested in what they're saying, to be interested, genuine, to be real, to be take real interest in that person, to say, you are important enough that I'm going to take value in what you're saying to me. We should take other people's ideas and opinions into consideration. See, I like people's new ideas that come into the church and say, oh, that's, we should do that ministry. Yes, maybe that is a great idea. Maybe that's not the time that we need to be doing it. So let's take that into consideration. Everything's not a bad idea. You ever hear the thing that that's not a stupid idea? There is no dumb ideas, but let's take it in consideration. Let's see if that happens at the right time. We are encouraged to be slow to speak. That's a second component of this, slow to speak. Think before we speak. Don't make the mistake of blurting out something out before you have thought about it. The, statistically, they say that you should take at least 10 seconds before you speak. Most people don't do that these days. They, he who says it the loudest will be the rightest. Have you ever heard that? Whoever says it the loudest, I mean, come on. You ever been in a political r rally or debate? Whoever's speaking the loudest will get the, the, win the debate. That's not always true. I have been in different places and different ideas and, and seen debates and seen people think, and they're yelling at each other and they're trying to get their point across. It's almost like an auction. Who wins and speaks the loudest is always the winner. But that's not always true. The person who is making the best point and have the most consideration has actually thought it out and got the reasoning it out and made the most a, a position. I have, uh, Gloria has loved the debate. She has made great debates. She has sh shared with some of her debates and she has put lots of work in her debates. And, and she has shared some of them with me and some of them I agreed with and some of them I have not agreed with, but she has put lots of thought in it. She didn't just say, oh, I'm just gonna go in and debate about them. She has thought about them. So slow to speak and has thought about it. The third component is, we should be slow to wrath. The words or actions sometimes incite us to anger and harmful words. What can we have be done to check our anger? God tells us to be self-controlled, spirit controlled. When we look, look to wisdom of the Lord for wi wisdom and direct for the Holy Spirit greater understanding, in each situation. There are times in life that we need to really take self-control. Too many times we lose self-control. We get up on the wrong side of the bed. We all heard that. Yes. But what if your bed is next to the wall? Too many times that adage of, I got up on the wrong side of the bed, is just an excuse of, I'm cranky, leave me alone, or I'm cranky, this is just who I am. We use excuses of, I'm just angry. 
There was a time and a season in my life that I came home every day angry at my family. They had to put up with it because I was angry for, and I couldn't explain why I was angry, but they had to take it in. And I had to pray about it. I had to seek it. I even went to counseling because I was angry and they had to put up with it. And they, they didn't excuse my behavior. Nobody excused my behavior. It was just something I had to deal with. And so I had to pray about it. I had to take a lot of deep breaths, count from a thousand down to zero. They had to take it. But then God helped me with it. And still sometimes I have those spouts of anger. But the Holy Spirit will work in on you. But see, the, the thing is, there's moments you have to decide, I'm going to be slow to anger, so to speak. Here's the other side. My face, when I'm not smiling, I'm not joking around, people automatically think I'm angry because of my scar tissue. If I'm listening intently and they're talking directly to me, they think I'm angry because I'm not smiling, but I can actually be thinking and listening. There was a moment that I was, I was listening to somebody and they, they looked at me and they says, are you mad at me? Absolutely not. I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, well, you're, you look angry. Nope, I'm listening. I'm thinking. I'm paying attention to you. I'm doing what the other one says, slow to speak. But there's times that people, we misread one another. And that's okay too, but we just have to ask those questions. Are you angry? Are you upset? Are you, are you doing something? But we have to be patient with one another. We have to encourage one another. And we'll talk about that next week. But the very fact is we need to take those components, right? We need to look at those components. What are those components? Again, we need to be swift to hear or slow to, slow to, I'm going to read those, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry from James 1.19. We need to look at those. We need to pay attention to one another. We need to be genuine with one another. How do we do that? We need to control our tongue. We're going to go back to the very first one is to really don't check our brains and at the door. We need to understand that if we don't, we, we don't talk before we think and we then we, we don't just we need to control our tongues. Those are very important things. You say, well, this feels like I'm at school. You know what? We need to be students of the word each and every day. So let's go back to our main verse this morning. I told you this wasn't going to be long this morning. Ephesians 4.29 says this. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as, as good for building up as fit the occasion that it may give grace, grace to those who hear. And that falls into place with don't check your brains in the door and take, control your tongue. Grace, each one of those. So as you walk through this day, as you go through this day, begin to think, how are you gonna be a good listener? How are you gonna control your, don't check your brains in the door? And how are you gonna be a good listener? Those things both work together and those things begin to affect, those will affect you and those will affect the people around you. So as we walk through this day, as you walk through and you study your scripture and you begin to think, Yes, there's things I need to change. And I shared some very important things from my life with you. Now, when you begin to think, how can you change? How can you begin to work on things in your life to know that a communication is essential? How can we become better communications, communicators and let God work in your life? Because God wants to do some great things in each one of us. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for the encouraging words. I thank you for your spirit. I pray that, Lord, that you begin to move and that, Lord, that you begin to speak. And, Lord, I love you and I praise you. And, I, Lord, I thank you for these challenging words that, Lord, that you've challenged each one of us. And, Lord, I pray that you speak to us in your name. Amen.